Today we're going to be showing you how to build the PowerPod for our Excel series models. Now this PowerPod is going to interchange with lots of our different Excel models and the assembly is going to be the exact same whether it's for FT Scout XL, FT 3D XL, FT Tutor XL in the future, many different models. There's a couple of important things to point out. You may notice that in this build video we go from maker foam to flight test foam. Again, the build sequence is going to be the exact same. Don't pull off your facing paper. And also some of our models like our FT 3D XL may have a little bit of right hand thrust in there. The way that you're going to know the side to mount your firewall is by the direction that the A fold is going to be pointing towards. It's very easy to see. You have your A, you have your A indicator, and it's pointing towards the front end, which is your firewall. Let's get our materials in order and we'll get started. Now this power pod design is going to be very common to all of our future XL designs here and the main fact that we have a double thickness sidewall. Some power pods may be a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, but all the construction should be pretty much exactly what you see here. The items we're going to need is our main fuselage power pod piece, our firewall, and of course our 2814 motor to go on top of it. Along with that, we're also going to need our hot glue gun, a razor blade, and some tape. First thing we want to do here is to weed out the sections of foam that we need in order to get our C folds and our A fold. Let's go ahead and do that right now. And just like before, anytime we have score cuts, we like to chase those score cuts with a razor blade just to make sure that the paper easily peels off. Feel free to pause the video and make sure that your piece looks exactly like what you see here. Now for our power pod, the first thing we're going to do on both sides is going to be our C-fold. To make a proper C-fold, all we simply need to do is fold our pieces over 180 degrees and make sure the very edges line up with each other and the side with the paper is 90 degrees. Once we practice that fold, we're going to lay down a bead of glue. I always like to put a little thin ribbon right on the paper and then fold it over 180 degrees. And again, where we're putting most of our attention is just to make sure that all the edges line up with each other. We're gonna give this about 30 seconds to dry and then we can do the other side. And we're gonna do the exact same process on the other side. Always check to make sure that the fit is proper. There we go. Once we practice that fold, we're gonna lay down a bead of glue and then we'll fold it over 180 degrees. And again, where we're putting most of our attention is just to make sure that all the edges line up with each other. Now that we have both of our C folds done, our next step is to do an A fold to finish off our power pod. To do a proper A fold, we're going to leave the side plates firmly against the table and we're going to rotate the bottom plate up 90 degrees. You're going to notice that when we do this, we now have both surfaces of our fold over now meeting with the bottom. We want to make sure that we put plenty of glue on both those bottom surfaces so we get a good strong glue joint. So we go ahead and practice it. We have our 90 degree bend. Now we can focus the majority of our glue right on the bottom of both those layers. Then we'll take our side plates against the table and as we push our bottom plate against the table and rotate it up 90 degrees, we're going to hold that until it's fully dry. Just like all of our other builds, it's always good to make sure that we hold this at 90 degrees just to get a nice square fit. Now that's dried, we'll do the other side here. Just a quick test fit. That looks great. Now we can focus the majority of our glue right on the bottom of both those layers. Then we'll take our side plates against the table. And as we push our bottom plate against the table and rotate it up 90 degrees, we're going to hold that until it's fully dry. Now that we have our main power pod section, we can double check just to make sure that both of our side plates are above the bottom plate. Now that we have our main power pod made, we're going to go ahead and test fit our main firewall. And our 2814 motor is made specifically to be able to fly our XL model airplanes. Now it's really important whenever we mount this that we make sure that we mount this so the wire leads can easily go through this hole right here. And if you notice, our spacing on our back motor mounts is not the same. We're gonna make sure that we line up our two outer and that the orientation is proper so these can pass through. Once we see what that orientation is, we can then transfer this over to the power pod and glue it in. Put a nice healthy bead of glue. The glue that does add tremendous strength, but it's really the tape that we're gonna put on next that is gonna make this last for a long time. Put this right on top. I like to let it squish down here. And it's really easy to go back afterwards with a scrap piece of foam and scrape off any excess that you may have. Now that our firewall is glued to our power pod, our next step is to wrap it with tape all around all three sides to make sure the power pod and the firewall are joined.
Whenever I wrap these, I kind of wrap these as if it's a gift, making sure there's plenty of overlap and then I can fold it down on all three edges. Now that we have everything taped up, we're gonna carefully remove the tape from the areas that we need to so we can properly mount our motor. Make sure that you don't neglect the center hole right here because that could actually prevent your motor from spinning freely. Now included with our 2814 motors, we have these four countersunk screws. We'll also include this X mount, and if you wish to provide your own wood screws, you can use this X mount to be able to mount to the outside here. But in this case, I'm just gonna use the simple blue Loctite here. I'm gonna use my screwdriver and I'm gonna mount the motor from the rear. So if I ever need to loosen it, all I need to do is remove the power pod and loosen the screws. Definitely recommend any time that you're mounting any screws to your motor, if you have blue Loctite, definitely use it. First thing we're gonna do is just gonna pass our leads right through the firewall. Put a little drop of blue Loctite on this. Now that we have one screw threaded in, we can use that as an index and line up our other three screws and then tighten them all down evenly. Now that we have our motor screwed on, our last step is to attach our ESC. Now the orientation that we plug in our three ESC leads is gonna decide our motor rotation. If for any reason your motor runs backwards, in this case clockwise instead of counterclockwise, all you simply need to do is change any two of the three motor leads right here. And just to keep everything dressed up nice, we can use either a piece of Velcro or a little bit of hot glue. And we're gonna glue our ESC right onto the sidewall so that both our lead of our battery can go out the back and also our signal lead. All right, friends, our power pod is now done. By now, you should have your motor installed. You should have your power pod built. We are ready to move on to our next video in your XL build series. We'll see you there.